Now, complete high school football coverage. This is 10 Sports First and 10, sponsored by Magic City Ford, Freedom First Credit Union, and Shules Home. Welcome to week three of First and 10. We have the double whammy tonight, Friday the 13th in a full moon. I have it on good authority. It won't happen again in 30 years. Our staff isn't spooked, though. Sergeant Tierney told us years ago, there's more of everything when there's a full moon. It upsets people. It makes them nuts. It makes them nuts. Jeff Williamson has gone a little nuts. He's AWOL tonight, but the A-team, Elena and Ashley, stepped in to make sure the web juggernaut continues. WSLS.com, first and ten, which brings us to our game of the week. Two teams who rushed out to 2-0 records, both in impressive fashion. William Fleming coming off the mat. Magna Vista, who's retooling. One turned out to be ready for prime time tonight. Our own Eric Johnson was in Magna Vista, where we got reminded Magna Vista is just a couple years removed from being the premier team in Class 3 in the state, and Coach Vivero knows the way back. Eric? That's exactly right, Appy. We know the last time that Magna Vista started the season 2-0, and we know that led to a state championship in 2014. And really, they've been trying to get back to blue funk football. That is aggressive defensive play and one that flies all over the field. They did just that tonight while also taking advantage of some opportunities against William Fleming. Let's get out to the game student section. Pumped for this one. Had a great time with them on Facebook Live earlier. First quarter action. Check out the first play from scrimmage. It's the Warriors. Liberty commit Lewis Taylor rumbling 47 yards to the house for the score. Later, it's quarterback Dryas Hairston connecting with his main man, Ty Grant, and he certainly grants you a 29-yard touchdown score, 21-0 Magna Vista. Back to the ground is Jaquez Martin hugging the sideline like it's family, squeezing through for the 25-yard touchdown score. Fleming eventually got on the board with this catch and run. Daquan Nichols hits Saquon Bannister, who does the rest, 88-yard march for the touchdown, but Magna Vista too much to handle tonight. Hairston on the QB keeper plunges his in, and the defense for Magna Vista forced three turnovers in the 55-14 to victory. I was just excited the way they play. They fly around, and they have a, have a good time with it. So, you know, that's what you want. When they play with a lot of emotion, a lot of toughness, you know, they, the sky's the limit for that group. We hungry, man. We never we never fool. We hungry. Each and every play, we want them. Want to get them back. We don't want to give them nothing. We, we all play hard. We all executed. And that's that's the um, difference in the game on the scoreboard. As I mentioned, it's a 3 0 star for Magna Vista. We know what happened last time that they did this state titles in 2014 and 2015. I'm no fortune teller, but we'll see how this season rolls out for them. As for Fleming, they'll look to regroup as they have to play Patrick Henry next week. Happy? All right, Eric, very much. Another game where we're going to learn just where some people stand. E.C. Glass, one of my preseason picks with Coach Woody out there to make a run. And Franklin County, who got my attention by playing Salem to the wire. Yeah, miserable rainy night, but we're going to love a rainy night tonight. Franklin County down 6 nothing. Joshua Luckett connecting. Jacob Stockton, pretty throw and catch. Dragging a hilltopper into the end zone. 7-6 game. Glass gets things rolling again. We've seen him before. We'll see him again. Drayshawn Kendrick. Keep and sweep and look at him roll in for the easy six. Glass again, this time to the air. Kendrick searching. He's going to find Warren Horsley eventually. And that is another touchdown. Glass, 34 to 7, your final. Jefferson Force at GW Danville. And how good is GW? We're about to find out. Eagles in flight. Wesley Graves breaking a tackle. Look at him book. And it's 6 nothing Eagles. Meantime, Coach Anderson, while well, he knows Shakobi Hairston can get it to Graves in the flat. And when he's this wide open, oh, forget about it. It's 14-0 Eagles in this one. Time to beat the drum because we get some more Graves here. It is 21-0 G-Dub after this touchdown run. And if we can hang long enough, we'll get the flex from the Tower of Power. G-Dub, 50 to 21. Christiansburg's looking to start the year 3-0. Meantime, oh, Dan River Martinsville, that game got pushed till tomorrow. That's 2 p.m. tomorrow. That's why you don't see a score there. There's Christiansburg. Halifax is a winner over person of North Carolina. Four game, uh, four point game tonight. Chatham over Tunstall. As we move on, K 
Camp Crystal Lake is Jinx. The counselors weren't paying any attention. His name was Jason. At James River, his name is Tim Jennings. He has control of the Knights and Buchanan. Did they have control of the Visiting Blues? At Botetot, the name of the game was defense. Could they corral Bluefield's high-octane offense in an old-fashioned border war? And in Charlottesville, could the Patriots unleash their firepower on the Patriots of Albemarle? Plus this. We are the Haynes High School cheerleaders in your All right, thanks to the Marching Cavaliers, and I'm sure Glenver fans were ready to march after a couple of brutal games to open this season. Tonight, Cave Spring was in. Here we go, a little rainy night, but remember, they got a turf out there now. Everything's okay. Glenver down 6-3 to Cave. Uh, ben Robinson, nice defense in the end zone. They'd settle for a field goal 6-6 at the half. Cave coughing it up, coming up here. Fall ball, Brady Loader is on it, picks it up. That would set up his own touchdown run. And then a little bit later on, Colby Street's going to rumble on in. He is a rolling ball of butcher knives right there. Glenver, 27 to 6. Three River scores for you. Graham over Giles in one of those rivalry games. Auburn by a score over Floyd. Radford rolls at Fort Chiswell. Rockbridge County over Allegheny. Meanwhile, in Narrows, Virginia, the Green Wave hosting Chill Howie tonight. Quarterback Chase Blaker on the keeper, taking it down to the red zone. A few plays later, it's Blaker. A little pitch right here. We got the option going. Green Wave would punch it in. They win 20 to 14 is your final. Scores for you, Buffalo Gap. All over Bath County, 71 to 20 tonight is your final and storage draft over Covington. All right, time for the breakdown. It's a couple of teams, frankly, looking to get their footing and cement some program identity, if you will. I know what Perry McClure was, Brooke. I remember their big halfback oriented offense. I remember James River just a year or two ago running that crazy spread. But honestly, that's my memory. That's not necessarily reality right now. Well, when you have pretty much a scoreless game, you kind of throw everything out that, right. you know, that is your identity. Okay, yeah, completely out the window. And honestly, uh, James River assistant coach Jesse Witt said tonight that as long as he's been in this rivalry game, that it's never not been sloppy. And that's kind of what it was tonight. But every rivalry game has a lot at stake tonight. It was Knights head coach Tim Jennings trying to get his first win at home in Perry McClure trying to score their very first points of the season. Fighting Blues starting out with possession. They held on to it for the first six minutes of the game, but couldn't really make anything work. Later, James River Adam Bridges connects with Kevin Timer. They get a little momentum going, but first half ends 0-2-0. Closest scoring opportunity for the Knights comes in the third in the red zone, but Blues' Trey Oren comes up big. D-line stuffs him on the next play. Finally, midway through the fourth quarter, Bridges pushes it in, and the Knights win it tooth and nail, 6 nothing over Perry McClure. Just kept responding. That was the thing. We didn't get to do exactly what we wanted to do, um, but the, guy, the guys answered every single time. Um, we had a lot of guys go in uh, at different parts of the game, and they stepped up. Uh, we had guys that, uh, you know, did some things that we didn't know they could do in practice. Uh, we put some guys in positions they hadn't practiced and asked them to do some things that we normally wouldn't ask them to do. And um, every single time we stepped up and just, you know, made the play when we needed to make the play. And James River will host Covington next week, and Perry McClure will have a bye. Back to you, Happy. All right, thanks, Brooke. At Lord Botetot tonight, one of those border war games. Bluefield routinely one of the best West Virginia has to offer. Lord Botetot certainly the same in the Commonwealth. Early action, scoreless game. James Ryan Salvi going up top. Kyle Arnholt will haul it in right in front of me. Great grab right there. 7-0 LB in this one, but hold on. The Bluefield Beavers have a nice spread offense and a good quarterback named Carson Deeb. And watch him find Jaheim House right here. Little fade early second quarter. Back of the end zone, end line. That is a touchdown. We've got a 7-7 game. We take it to the end of the half. More Deeb going up top to House on a slant that went 42 yards for six. But... This one about defense. Botetot shuts them out in the second half and rallies for the 
to 14 victory. Folks, we're heading into homecoming week at Lord Botetourt. I'm still learning the traditions that surround all these events through my family, of course, which brings me to this whole deal of making elaborate invites for homecoming, making of signs, which is where my stepson Ethan probably was headed until first and ten steps up. Here it is from your starting Cavs linebacker. Probably more viewers looking in on this than your average ask, but Miss uh, Duncan. You now have an official first and ten homecoming invite proposal. Ask whatever you crazy kids call it these days. Happy to help. It's my job. It's what I do. Which brings me to our Facebook question. Go to my station page. Chime in. What is your most memorable homecoming tradition? It does help if you tell me what state you're graduated in and what regional action perhaps you were looking at. Meantime, Northside and Hidden Valley turned out to be perhaps the game of the night. Vikings up 16-14. Christian Fisher, he is now a running back. 22-14 Vikings. Titans answer. Look at Grayson Carroll. Cross Thompson. 78 yards and we're tied at 22. 40 seconds left. Vikings go for the field goal. It's up in the rain. It's good. 25-22, but we're not done. Three seconds left. Hidden Valley goes all the way down into the red zone. Carroll trying to get the magic. It's in the corner. No. 25-22, your final. Bassett over Bird, 23-12, and Stanton River takes out Liberty, 17-7. Our out-of-town special tonight, Patrick Henry making the trip to Albemarle High. Battle of the Patriots. And let's get a look at PH and Jalen Cook. He is a talent, and he is coming to a boil. 7-0 PH in this one. They go on to a 26 to nothing victory. Amherst at Blacksburg tonight. Early action, Blacksburg high, and the Bruins got fierce fast. Luke Goforth, Kareem Muhammad on the screen. First drive of the game, he's in for the touchdown. Blacksburg added another touchdown on the next drive. Lancer's trying to fight back. D'Angelo Brown broke off a smooth run right here. They punched it in a few plays later, but not nearly enough. Blacksburg 38 to 18 is your final. Pulaski 49, Abington nothing is another score out of the River Ridge. If you listen to the old timers in town, they'll tell you he's still out there. And you know what else is still out there? A win streak of monumental proportions. That and more from Roto Catholic when we come back. Yesterday, Brooke Leonard chronicled the 33-game win streak. The Celtics are currently carrying three-time defending BIS champs Norfolk Christian in tonight. And here we go. Caleb Hunt looking to convert right here, launching deep. Marquise Adams snagging the pick right there. That'll set up Adrian Worley, dishing to Kawan Ray, who's, uh, here he goes, fighting his way down the sidelines for the score and an 8 to nothing lead. In three plus seasons, Catholic continues to roll. How about 44 to nothing? North Cross at Eastmont. It's been nine years since North Cross has played a Virginia public school. That's Zay Baines hanging out, looking good. Can't wait to see him in uniform and playing. But right now, Carter Cole, nice catch and run. And that's going to set up Isaac Harris, who runs it in for the easy seven. This one goes to North Cross. 36 to nothing. Galax all over Carroll County tonight, 49 nothing. George with wins and Roar retreat, retreat 15 7 over Grayson County. Back to the Seminole District. I think we knew Heritage Vance wasn't a true measure of anything. Vance would beat most small colleges, Eric. Right. But uh, <laughs> we know now Heritage is still pretty talented. That's exactly right. Still loaded with talent and Brad Bradley still leading the charge. They're still in good hands. Out to the game we go for this one. Heritage striking first. Cameron Burns hooks up with Kyron Thomas. 15-yard touchdown score for the 7-0 lead. Appomattox on the ground at pound. It's a fumble by Christian Ferguson. Heritage gets the ball back, and it leads to Christian Rivera. Plunging it in for the 5-yard touchdown score. 14-0 lead. K.J. Vaughn got in on the action with a nice touchdown up the gut. Heritage goes on to the 52 to 14 victory. How about Rustburg hosting Alta Vista second half action? Rustburg up 27 nothing when they get a 55 yard touchdown run from Mr. RJ Anthony. Catch me outside if you can. 
34-0 Rustburg leading out to Vista's Jalen Jones. It's going to be picked off by Eli Morgan here on the play. Sweet pick that set up a 25-yard touchdown pass for Jalen Jones. Coming to you right there, 41 nothing at mm. that point. Rustburg goes on to the 50, excuse me, 55-0 victory tonight. Scores tonight, LCA all over Stanton, 41 to six. All right, I've got some more scores for you as we wrap things up tonight. You say Flavana, I say Flavana. You say Flavana, 24 to six over Nelson County. William Campbell, 45 nothing over Stonewall Jackson tonight, the team. All right, I feel like it was a fine show indeed. Week four is now in the distance. We'll bring it to you as always, and as always, we'll see you next week. TV, online, on your phone, anywhere you are at 10 News, we're always working for you.